everybody. I hope you're all well. Welcome to my session today, providing a simple overview of the differences between research quality improvement, a service evaluation project and audit. And I will we'll be relating this to the purpose, the scope and the procedures required. This session is for anybody who's a registered healthcare professional or a healthcare student. And if you find this video helpful, remember to give me a thumbs up. Do check out my other free videos on my YouTube channel, Support and Career Development for Nurses. And I have a playlist coming out specifically on quality improvement and change management that's relevant for any healthcare professional or student and lots more videos planned in the future. So I hope you find it helpful. So why will this presentation help you? So any healthcare professional applying for jobs nowadays usually will have some questions relating to some of these terms. So it's helpful for interview preparation. Healthcare students might be introduced to these terms early on in their degree course and you can become confused with some of the terms. Early career healthcare professionals might be asked to implement audits or become involved with quality improvement in clinical practice. And if you're aspiring to become a researcher, doing audit, service improvement projects, service evaluations is a great way to get started in your research career. So the first thing to say is it's normal to become a little confused with the range of terms. Across healthcare professionals, professions, sorry, we have a lot of business management leadership terms and healthcare speak can get very confusing relating to quality improvement, clinical governance, quality assurance and change management. So I'll be doing videos on all of those areas in the future. And sometimes these terms are used interchangeably, they become, can be interrelated and it can become confusing. Um, so if any of you are interested, I'll be releasing a quality improvement and quality insurance in healthcare video, and that will be providing an overview of key terms relating to those two areas for all healthcare professionals. So it will be very helpful for interviews if any of you are interested. So looking at the similarities between research, quality improvement, service evaluation project, projects and audits, the reason people can get confused is the same data collection methods and tools, data collection tools can sometimes be used, for example, questionnaires, surveys and interviews. All of them will have a clear question, aim and purpose, whatever project you do. They will all require data collection in some form and they all should use a systematic and or cyclical approach. So when we're looking at the clearly defined differences between a research project, quality improvement, service evaluation or an audit, it's really about the purpose and the scope of the project. What is the aim and the objectives? What are you trying to achieve and why? And looking at um, demonstrating the differences, I'm currently a PhD student in nursing and my study is looking at um, nurses use of electronic patient records and how that may influence nurse patient interaction. So I thought I'd choose some examples linked to electronic patient record use um, to demonstrate the differences. And that's quite generic to all healthcare professionals, not just nurses. So when we look at research, research is about generating new knowledge. And so we don't know what the answer is going to be. We're going to be going in with a research question. We don't know what we're going to find. So an example might be, what is the nature of nurse patient interactions when nurses use electronic patient record systems in acute hospital settings? So I'm going in as a researcher and I'm going to do some observations and some interviews with staff and patients to examine the nature of nurse patient interactions. With audit, the difference is it's about measuring the quality of care and it should be measured against a national standard or benchmark. So an example might be to look at whether staff are using the electronic patient record system correctly and safely according to national benchmarks. So we could compare safety practices when healthcare professionals use electronic patient systems in line with a national audit tool. And we could be looking at whether staff are sharing ID access or overriding the system to gain access, which goes against national practice, national advice. 
So moving on to service evaluation, as it sounds, an evaluation is making a judgment on something and you're making a judgment on that service, on how well a system works in the service, the service works overall, the process. And we're looking to see, does it need to improve once we've done that evaluation? And usually when we do service evaluations, we do that through service user, staff feedback, patient feedback on their experiences. So an example might be healthcare professionals experiences using electronic patient records. How well does the system work? What needs to improve from the service user perspective? So we could give all the staff questionnaires and you could do that from a patient perspective as well, for example. Quality improvement projects aim to improve patient care through changes to healthcare systems. You're implementing a change in practice or in relation to a process in healthcare. So an example might be implementing a new EPR system and evaluating whether it works in this local context. Or it could be implementing a staff education program to increase awareness and improve safe practice during elect um, electronic patient record use. So just to summarise the key differences linked to the data collection and some of the processes that need to happen. Research aims to generate new knowledge. The researcher doesn't know the answer to their research question or their hypothesis, what they're going to find until the research is conducted. There must be formal ethical approval before you conduct healthcare research in the UK. And that's because the time and resources spent on research are labour intensive and they need to be justified. So if you're taking a healthcare professional out of the clinical environment to do an interview or to conduct a questionnaire, you have to justify that on your ethical um, application. Research adheres to national research standards and there's higher risk linked to safeguarding, consent and recruitment of participants. So safeguards must be in place to protect participants before a research study is ethically approved. So when we look at audit, audit aims to measure the quality of care and a service against agreed standards or a national benchmark. So a good example is the hand hygiene audit, and that's underpinned by national protocol for measuring how good healthcare workers are at cleaning their hands for each of the five moments of hand hygiene. Once the handy hygiene audit is completed, it's expressed as a percentage of times that hands are cleaned when they should be. So there's a percentage of staff, at the end of it, there should be a percentage of staff that use good handy hygiene and a percentage of staff that don't use good handy hygiene. So audits are used to compare the quality across services, locally or nationally. Does care meet the standard required? If not, how can we improve? That's how it links to quality improvement. So we learn from audit feedback, we implement change and we re-audit to monitor improvement or to maintain a high standard and to look at changes. So post audit, when a manager would receive the feedback from a handy hygiene audit, it might be very good. So they're thinking, right, we need to maintain this standard. If it needs improving, they may implement a quality improvement program, they may um, look at educating staff, um, it just depends on the scenario, but they will be looking to, you to use the information they're given from that audit to inform future quality in their service. When we look at service evaluation, a service evaluation aims to make a judgment on how well things are working and what needs to improve in a service. So a good example is the National Friends and Family Test, where patients submit anonymous feedback on their experience of a healthcare service. And results from service evaluation, similar to audits, provide feedback that can inform local planning in that service. And service evaluations, again, should be repeated to look for changes and improvements. So so um, the friends and family data is looked at regularly through the year and annually going forward. So when looking at a quality improvement project, a quality improvement initiative will be implemented that aims to improve the quality of care. It could be focused on improving patient care, staff experiences, a healthcare system or a healthcare process. The quality improvement intervention and change should already have been proven to work and that's where it's different to research. So for example, an established validated quality of life scale may be used to enhance patient experiences. 
there is less risk to the patient or the service user and QI projects usually only require local employer authorization but do check with your employer quality improvement leave because some quality improvement um, projects do require a eth more formal ethical approval. So some additional UK resources and websites that are very good and have got more information. The National Institute for Health and Care Research and they have a research design service. Biomedical Research Centres, NHS websites for quality improvement frameworks and strategies. The Healthcare Quality Improvement Partnership, which is an independent organisation led by the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges and the Royal College of Nursing. And quality improvement hubs and local quality improvement leads and networks all have a wealth of information that can help you. I also have some videos linked to different research nurse roles, how to become a nurse researcher, some examples of quality improvement projects that I've been involved with, how to choose your nursing dissertation topic and research question as well if you're interested. And as I said, lots more videos coming out in the future linked to quality improvement, quality assurance and change management. So good luck if you're going to look at um, doing any quality improvement projects and um, if you do want to contact me for any questions at all do put the questions in the YouTube channel. Um, if you want to DM me on Twitter or on my website if you don't want to put um, questions out publicly on YouTube I'm very happy to answer questions and if you're interested in either of my books how to prepare for interviews develop your career as a nurse or midwife or how to thrive as a newly qualified nurse there are links to my books in the description on YouTube as well.